And of course, <laughs> not anything close. There was never a criminal investigation. We never submitted thousands upon thousands of, of, of uh, uh, you know, fraudulent signatures, forgeries. I mean, so you had like that type of accusation being hammered on us over and over and over again so that the exposure we did get, while there would be a certain constituency, of course, with nationally that would recognize what was happening because they were aware of how the Democratic Party interferes. They are aware of how ballot access is structured across the country to deny independents and third parties the opportunity to be on the ballot, to deny voters' choice, essentially. But that, that constituency among you know, the national uh, audience here was limited. And so I think most of the time, the assumption was, well, here they are. These people are up to no good, these independent third party folks. And of course, if you are... Uh, watching CNN and MSNBC, then the assumption is it's not said, but it's implied that the Green Party is working for Donald Trump and his people. I mean, this goes back to the whole Jill Stein through the election for Donald Trump in 2016, all that nonsense. There you go. Good Great. to have you back. Yes, thank you for having me back on. It's really good to see you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So one of the things that I actually noticed and i'm going to bring this tweet up because i thought it was very important and i saw this i was just like wait a minute this is um hang on uh let me share this with the audience because i think this is very important um for context <laughs> one of the things that you spoke about was how the North, uh, the North Carolina Democratic Party has essentially been interfering with your uh, ballot access in North Carolina for your in your run for Senate, and you you and the Green Party actually took them to court over it, and I would just like to share, and if you can give us the update um, <coughs> about this. So it says the U.S. court has found that the North Carolina Democratic Party, the SCC, and uh, Mark Elias attempted to keep my campaign in North Carolina GP off the ballot in 2022 to be frivolous and without foundation. If you can give us more of a the bird's eye view of, of what happened. Correct. And actually, I left the word out. They called it unreasonable as well. Um, oh, yes. So uh, frivolous, unreasonable, and without foundation. And they awarded us damages, which from what I understand and what the court itself said is quite rare to do. Uh, yeah. Typically when you win your previous cases, you may not get damages, particularly in a political case like this. And mm -hmm. so the court noted just how egregious the North Carolina Democratic Party's uh, efforts were to keep us off the ballot. Uh, and they awarded us these damages. Now, <clears throat> go back, this was two years ago in 2022, we had to collect uh, signatures uh, to get on the ballot, we needed 13,865 signatures. We collected yeah. 22,500 signatures. We turned them in in time, you know, did everything we were supposed to do, followed the rules, and we were denied verification. The, the State Board of Elections claimed that they were concerned with fraud on our behalf. And of course, that's completely untrue. We didn't commit fraud. But what they said when it was time to validate us as a state party, they said, because we suspect there's fraud, we cannot go ahead with certifying you as a political party. Very similar to the argument that Trump and his people were using after the 2020 elections that we, we think something is wrong. We're not going to show you any evidence. We're not going to allow for any due process. But because we suspect something is wrong, we're going to try and prevent this from going forward. And that's essentially what they did to us. So we sued. We went to federal court. Uh, the Democratic, when we sued, we sued the state, North Carolina State Board of Elections. Uh, the mm -hmm. Democratic Party entered into that suit. Uh, they intervened. They jumped onto it. Uh, and it wasn't the North Carolina Democratic Party, but it was the Democratic Senate, uh, uh, the, the DSCC, the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. So Chuck Schumer's group represented by Mark Elias and his law firm, uh, which as people know, Mark Elias is the Democratic Party's super lawyer. We went to US District Court, we won in US District Court, the Democratic Party appealed, we went to federal appeals court, we won in federal appeals court, and then uh, now 
<clears throat> almost two years later, uh, we won damages in U.S. District Court against the Democratic Party. Hopefully, this will be able to be used as a precedent across the nation, right? Where that, now you have this established case where not just uh, how we were uh, lied about, we were uh, bullied. We were, uh, everything was done by both the state and the Democratic Party to keep us off the ballot. But also you have this clear judicial decision citing these types of actions and then, you know, finding this precedent for damages to be awarded. Mm. Um, just a question, as far as uh, the the meddling, um, has there ever been any word from Josh Stein, who is the Attorney General of North Carolina, regarding this? Has he, you know, condemned the Democratic Party for what they have done or, you know, offered any type of cooperation or support for you guys into clarifying this issue? No, of course not. Of course not. And Josh Stein, of course, is running as the uh, candidate for governor for the Democratic Party here in North Carolina this year. Uh, no, no, of course not. Um, and it was, we had evidence uh, that there was interactions between the governor's office, so Roy Cooper, uh, this Mark Elias's law firm, and the state board of elections, so something else that was very illegal. We were never able to move forward with that. There was just no ability for us to find an avenue within North Carolina to present this very clear abuse of power, abuse of office by the governor's office, right, in a very political maneuver to keep a competitor off the ballot, there was nowhere for us to go with this. Uh, as that, It's similar, too, because it wasn't just their accusations of fraud, which itself was fraudulent. You know, they, they, they committed a mass, uh, uh, a mass uh, degree of fraud in accusing us of fraud. Uh, the, one of the things they also did, they did a bunch of different things uh, to try and keep us off the ballot, was that they called people and they sent people to uh, uh, the people whose homes who signed our petitions. So what they did was they called folks or they actually showed up at their doorstep and yeah. uh, they said, you know, uh, we are from the Green Party. They also said they were from the Secretary of State's office and the State wow. Board of Elections. So they are masquerading as state officials. We have yeah. video of this. We have audio of this. We have uh, written testimony, affidavits, essentially. Uh, people attesting to this is what happened. This person came to my door and said they were from the state of North Carolina and asked me to take my name off of the petition I signed for the Green Party. And similar, we presented that. It never went anywhere. The, the best, the only response we got to it, we got from the State Board of Elections was that, well, this sounds like it is um, canvassing to us, right? So the issue was that you had uh, within the State Board of Elections, uh, direct political appointees running the state board of elections whose allegiance is to the governor's office. So any degree of objectivity, any degree of neutrality, anything that is you would uh, expect or hope for, in which we all know is the case, it's not going to be the case. So don't, I don't want people to think I was naive, thinking it was ever going to be any way other than this. And we are prepared for it to a degree, but we were so, uh, I think, taken back by the brazenness of this, right? By just, just how overt the uh, clear and, and, and just how clearly they were acting in order to keep us off the ballot. And, you know, we shouldn't be surprised that the major media here in North Carolina went along with what they were saying. So that was another thing that we had is we had a lot of great support from folks like yourself, from from people across, uh, you know, YouTube and podcasts uh, on social media. But when it came to traditional media, what we were up against was just the headlines from the local television. Uh, the actual the News and Observer and the Charlotte Observer, they actually are pretty decent in terms of their coverage. But uh, for mm -hmm. the most part, the rest of the state went along with whatever the State Board of Elections or the Democratic Party said as 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 the truth. You know, and so what we were up against for months in our campaign were these accusations of fraud, uh, you know, and so we would get interviewed by uh, local media. Uh, it would be, when did you stop committing fraud? Right. You I mean, like, so there was never any an attempt. So even though you had this media attention, it was incredible negative. And then once we actually won, once we won in court, uh, both at U.S. District Court level and federal appeals court, the coverage completely dropped off. Right. Which, again, is something I think we would all expect. But to have that occur, to have that visceral experience, you know, how brazen it is, how, how overt it is, how they're not even trying to hide this, what they're doing here. I, I think that really 
causes you to take a step back and say, my God, this is, you know, this is as rigged and as corrupt as they say. However, to experience it is, a, you know, you're on a different level. You know, uh, and one of the things to, to uh, kind of add to your point regarding the media, this should have been national news, in my opinion, because when you look at this, this is literally election meddling. Yep. Forget what they su suspected Russia of doing. What's going on is essentially election meddling of a major political party in the election process. I mean, you know, this should have been picked up by MSNBC, Fox News, CNN, CBS, New York Times, Washington Post. It right. should have been picked up by so many. And it really, it should have been a, a huge issue. If I and let me ask you this: Have you ever been invited on by Fox News or any of more of the right wing outlets? Because I know they typically go against the Democratic Party whenever they right. can. I mean, this is literally cannon fall. I mean, not cannon fall. This is literally a a, a ram in the bush for for them. I mean, right. for, for the Democratic Party to go against you, and they could have just uplifted your story. Did they ever have you on? So uh, we we did uh, have some exposure that way, uh, but not on Fox, not on uh, Newsmax or One American News wow. Network or any of those, or or, or certainly not the the the, the major uh, uh, GOP uh, backed uh, new talk radio news radio. Uh, it, locally in North Carolina, you have the Carolina Journal, which is a conservative uh, uh, platform. They were very supportive and it was clear why they were supportive uh, and actually did some of the best reporting on this some of the best, best investigative reporting. Um, and then uh, we also had some support from uh, conservative uh, podcasters, YouTubers, uh, Twitter folks, uh, Tim Pool, I believe was one of them, you know, went on his show, you know, spoke or had, had was published in his, his, uh, his, 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 uh, uh, platform uh but i mean we we did have some national attention and, and to degree it was it was it was helpful so npr ran six stories on this uh the ap ran about the same number however the meat of the stories the substance of the stories was again was was very much biased against us and when we won when it was when we clearly won and, you know, the judgment against the Democratic Party and the State Board of Elections in the U.S. District Court was eviscerating. I mean, the judge was extremely angry and upset at what he had seen. And then uh, in, in return, the decision by the federal appeals court not to even entertain the motion to, you know, the motion to, to, to by the uh, North Carolina, by the Democratic, Democratic Senate, Senate Campaign Committee to um, uh, take us off the ballot was incredibly short. It was like two sentences long. It showed you like their disregard for the arguments put forward by the Democratic Party here. None of that was brought up in these stories. So what it was, was just the continued drama of the accusations. And very, very seldomly we were quoted, very seldomly we're given our due. Meanwhile, the state, the spokesperson for the North Carolina State Board of Elections would say over and over again, over a period of months, both locally and nationally, again, these NPR stories or these AP stories, uh, that, uh, you know, there is a universe of fraud. Uh, we are investigating thousands upon thousands of fraudulent signatures. We have opened a criminal investigation. So that's something we dealt with in July of 2022 was the newspapers, the local media, uh, including, I believe, the AP, publishing that we were under criminal investigation for committing fraud. And of course, <laughs> not anything close. There was never a criminal investigation. We never submitted thousands upon thousands of, of, of uh, uh, you know, fraudulent signatures, forgeries. I mean, so you had like that type of accusation being hammered on us over and over and over again so that the exposure we did get, while there would be a certain constituency, of course, with nationally that would recognize what was happening because they were aware of how the Democratic Party interferes. They are aware of how ballot access is structured across the country to deny independents and third parties the opportunity to be on the ballot, to deny voters choice, essentially. But that that constituency among you know national uh, audience here was limited. And so I think most of the time, the assumption was, well, here they are, 
These people are up to no good, these independent third party folks. And of course, if you are uh, watching CNN and MSNBC, then the assumption is it's not said, but it's implied that the Green Party is working for Donald Trump and his people. I mean, this goes back to the whole Jill Stein through the election for Donald Trump in 2016, all that nonsense, right? So, they, so it's not stated, but it's implied, and that was all that all rolls together. And then, of course, when we win, like I said. Uh, so a lot of coverage in, in particularly July and August of 2022, at the end of August 2022, when we win in federal appeals court, there is almost nothing said about this. The AP report was maybe a paragraph or two paragraphs long, if I remember correctly. I don't think NPR, even though they have written and, and, and posted so much about this, followed up at all. Uh, same thing too, even locally on, the, say, the local NPR stations here. While it was going on, and while I spent, let's like say, spend a whole hour with local reporters on uh, the public radio stations, say in Charlotte or, or or in Chapel Hill here, you know, your whole hour you're spent defending yourselves from these, you know, gross violations, these these gross accusations of violating, right? You know, of committing fraud, and then when you're cleared of that, there's no invitation to come back on and speak about your platform. And, and, and you know, just to give you an example of, 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 of this, where this goes to and why this all is, uh, is, uh, you know, once you get into that cycle, when you're really in the campaign, I had a, um, a local uh, television reporter here say this to me about two weeks before the election. And I had spoken to him a number of times over the summer as this court case was going on, as we were, you know, being, being uh, hit with all these accusations. Um, and once we were cleared and then it became September and October and the campaigns in full swing, uh, they never spoke to us again. And this one guy did speak to me again, right before the election. And he apologized and he said, you know, I'm sorry, we spoke to you all this time over the summer. And then, you know, last couple of months, we haven't even talked to you at all. I apologize. Said, but, you know, I mean, the reality is, is you're not going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars on my network. Why are we going to have you on? You know, I mean that, right? I mean, like, and so that type of, 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 again, the brazenness, the openness of it. I think he was exasperated. He was embarrassed by it. You know, he, I think he wanted to vent. You know, um, and but you saw that too. That's how the system is rigged in so many ways, not just with the money, but with the, how the media reports on things, and then of course the media not wanting to do anything to jeopardize their relationship with the two major parties very careful of walking that very fine line of access journalism, right? Not yeah. wanting to be the ones who aren't invited to be on Ted, you know, Senator Ted Budd, he was the Republican candidate, be on Ted's, Ted Bunn's bus as he drives across the state or whatever. Like, so, you know, you get excluded. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, it, it's a frustrating, difficult experience, but yeah, if you take it the view of, okay, we, we seceded, we won, we, we persevered, we won, and now we have ballot access here in the state. And more importantly, uh, we uh, have set this precedent and there's legal precedent uh, in U.S. courts for this type of victory on top of previous uh, victories uh, regarding ballot access that have been adjudicated in the courts. Oftentimes, we were very fortunate that we were able to have this adjudicated while there were still times. Very often in these ballot access cases, and this is one of the strategies that both the Democrats and Republicans use, they stretch things out, right? They delay it. They, in one, they're exhausting you. They're causing you to yeah. focus all on this legal aspect, right? Which is exhausting your resources. It's causing an enormous amount of stress within your campaign, and you're not campaigning. But the other thing too is, can we stretch this out so that they miss the deadline and we have to print the ballots without them? That was overall the strategy that the Democratic Party was going for with us, uh, you know. And so uh, many times, though, they're successful. And so you'll see yeah. in um, various ballot access uh, victories for third parties and independents, oftentimes it comes too late. Oftentimes it comes a year or two after the election, you know. So you're vindicated and you have that precedent now. But in terms of actually having been on a ballot, you were denied and they were successful to a degree. Uh, so, you know, hopefully that pre precedent is there. And again, like I said, we have ballot access now. So the Green Party does not have to do anything this year to try and get Jill Stein onto the ballot here. She's, you know, automatically on. And hey, I mean, you know, if it wasn't that case, there would, as of now, not be an anti-genocide candidate on the ballot here in North Carolina.
Wow. And, and just as a question, because I mean, really what they were committing against you was a political war of attrition, just to make sure that you do not get on the ballot and to X out any potential Green Party people, no matter what level of government that they may be running in right. on the ballot. But because of this victory, is there any chance that you may be running again or is that ship sailed? <laughs> right now that ship sailed. I, I've got I, I've, I've got enough going on. I, when, I, when I went to run, I said, this is the one time I'm doing it, you know, and uh, I was uh, much, uh, uh, much more dramatic than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> but it was, certainly was uh, it was worthwhile, though, in that sense is that we won these victories. Right. Including this most recent this most recent decision, you know, last mm -hmm. month or I guess two months ago now that, uh, you know, clearly laid it out that uh, there was a deliberate, well-structured, well-financed attempt by the Democratic Party to keep us off the ballot in the most undemocratic manner possible. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, so that is something that I think should be utilized by as many people around the country uh, as we fight against uh, this duopoly uh, in matters of genocide, you know, in terms of war on Wall Street, it's a uniparty, basically. You know, we're seeing these assaults on both the First and the Fourth Amendment by both parties. I mean, so, I mean, we, this, the, the, you know, as well as, too, just the material conditions, the living conditions, the quality of life for tens and tens, hundreds of millions of Americans, right? I mean, so all these things that do, that do make it a uniparty, this is just one more thing that we can present to people as the reason why we have to abandon this structure, we have to build something new, and we have to take back our political system because it's only going to get worse because that's the way it works, right? That's This inertia builds in one way, and it's building in the way against us. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for, you know, giving us the update about that. Uh, because I think it's important that we celebrate these victories whenever we have them, because uh, what they did against you and your campaign, and really overarchingly what they're doing against third parties is anti-democratic. It is, you know, and, and I know some people who may be conservative use phrases like this. Well, I'm going to say it. it's anti-American for them to do things like that because if they really truly stand for democracy then they would not be a barrier to people who are trying to run to in order to try to make the country better so i just want to thank you for that and this is not i think your point there about calling it anti-american is is appropriate right you know, regardless of the history of this country and everything we know about how we got to this point um but in a sense of how broad it is because here in North Carolina, even though we had our victory, North Carolina has still put up roadblocks, still put up obstacles, still trying to keep uh, RFK Jr. off the ballot, the Constitution Party off the ballot, Cornell West. Uh, they haven't submitted their signatures as far as I know, but I'm sure they will face problems. But certainly with RFK Jr.'s campaign, um, they came in, they spent a ton of money. Um, they got their signatures rather quickly. They submitted in the State Board of Elections ignored and delayed them for six months until the RFK Jr. campaign brought in the former uh, Chief Justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court as their lead attorney with the State Board of Elections. So they brought in the heaviest weighted conservative they could find in North Carolina. They were able to pay for him, right? You know, and that's a difference too. The RFK Jr. campaign has got tens and tens of millions of dollars behind it, you know, but if you're a grassroots campaign, you know, focused on, say, working families, you're not going to have that type of money behind them. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with, say, the Cornell West campaign here, whether they'll try and do the same thing. Because one, you know, what we're up against, none of everything I just said, everything we've been talking about the last 25 minutes, it doesn't change that those who are in power, it doesn't change their entitlement, it doesn't change their arrogance, and it doesn't change the confidence they have because of all the money behind them. And that's something we have to keep in mind who we're up against and how this is a continuous fight, a continuous battle that you know, we, we ever can't rest upon. Uh, they'll never rest. We can never rest. The, the, uh, you know, so we'll see what happens. I know even, even on the right, though, the Constitution Party, which is a party that you and I probably, I don't know if we, if we agree with anything they say, uh, <laughs> you know, um, but you know, they should be on the ballot. And the North Carolina State Board of Elections has been causing issues with them in terms of getting them certified. Hopefully they'll get through it. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, this is something that is broad. It applies to everyone, uh, not just, you know, leftist, grassroots, uh, independent or third party candidates or parties. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.